Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? Hi, my name is Thomas Workman. And I'm AJ Kavanagh, and together we are Intuitive Channels with Speaking From Source. We channel a variety of uh, interdimensional beings, extraterrestrials, native elders, ancestors, and masters to deliver source messages from consciousness for today's times. Very interesting. Now, you probably get told this all the time as well. I, I'm trying to remember when I had two channels on at the same time that were partners as well. I think this is... Oh, actually, I did. <laughs> I, I did. How can I forget them? They were from... Um, well, one was from the, the Netherlands, but they were both from America in, in a sense. Uh, yes, they did. Um, but I cannot for the life of me remember their names. So actually, yes, I only know of one other group, actually. With well, my, we're delighted to my hear that. Tell you the truth, we, we're actually delighted to hear that because we haven't found others yet. So glad to know. This is something that's very much emerging. You know, when uh, we each started channeling, we each had our own channeling practice. And then when we came together uh, with our, our, our life and our lifestyle and our channeling practice, um, we found that the guides wanted us to work together. And we found that when we went into channeling, we kind of shared. Uh, a telepathic mind. And the guide said, you know, we want you to introduce this idea of oneness, that there's no separation in consciousness. And it's interesting that, you know, there's at least one other uh, dual channel out there, uh, because this is something that is emerging. You're seeing, you know, obviously with the number of people that you're interviewing, the, the aspect of channeling coming forward in the consciousness today. I take it all back. I've just remembered, I, I, I for some reason, I thought the other was channeling as well. But they're both need. I think they're both need. They both need to be together for it to be the sort of best that it can be. But no, the other guy was not challenging. So no, you uh, you take still take the status of being unique in that perspective. Well, there we go. There, there you go. go. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 for, the, for whatever reason, no trophy. No, I feel yeah. so much better now, Kevin. I just want you to know. Yeah, you still won the heavyweight champion. It's 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 all good. It's all good. So okay. Um, where did the journey start for you both then? Because I think for, um, well, I think for Thomas, I think this would have been in your late fifties, which I think you're still in there right now. This is something new for you in the channeling sense. So what is your individual journeys when it comes to channeling? Sure. And they, they were individual for quite a while. And, uh, for me, I did sort of discover the entire world of metaphysics later in my life. I had spent most of my life spiritually, but mostly around traditional religion, that sort of thing. Never feeling comfortable there, knowing that there was something else, but didn't quite even know how to explore it. So I took an opportunity to begin to just dive in and I did everything. I took every course, I did everything I could. I found a mentor a wonderful mentor named Sheila Cash out of the DC area. And I literally just studied as much as I could. She invited me to a psychic circle and I did that for a long time. And then one day she invited me to a channeling circle. 
a, a private channeling circle invitation only. And I, I kind of thought, well, I hope the refreshments are good because I can't imagine this is something I could do. Uh, it just seemed very foreign to me. But sure enough, the longer I was in the group, the more it was clear to me that I had been channeling for quite some time. I used to sit out on my patio and uh, give full monologues. And I thought maybe I'm just a frustrated playwright uh, as I give these full monologues. And I realized later that this was all part of this channeling, this, uh, these, these uh, energies that were coming through me that were trying to express very clearly. They're always very important and uh, very foundational. And so, uh, so again, I just started to develop from there, continued my training, and then uh, built it into my regular practice. And then I met AJ. So, so then you're the the more sort of academic one, then, in a sense that you come from that yes, space. I, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I have it. <laughs> I, I like to say he's a smart one. You know? <laughs> I am more of the bookworm. I, I've always been uh, academic. I have a PhD in a regular field of study. I'm working on a PhD in metaphysics right now, a uh, doctorate in, in metaphysics. Um, I'm fascinated by this entire concept. I try to understand it, though some of it is not meant for human understanding. It's not meant for academic understanding, but there's so much. So I'll give you a great example of this, when you go back and trace the history of mystics across all of civilizations, you see that we have always had this guidance. The divine has never left humans alone. Uh, we have always had a variety of guides that tried to help us understand. And I believe at each moment, right? So there are surges when you certainly see more voices than less and surges where you see far less, but throughout all of history, depending on the need of humanity, there have always been interactions from divine. Interesting. So was there a point where, or what was the point where, you know, you could sort of let the academic side um, slide to, you know, aside to a bit and, and allow what you was doing to come in without that sort of um, attacking you in a sense for what you were doing? Yes, absolutely. And I think more importantly, learning to shut all of that down because this is outside of that intellectual thought. Um, and I don't think that's a surprise to anyone as much as it was for me, because that's a new habit. This absolutely letting go, you know, intellectually, we sort of like to always be in control till we've worked it out, till we've figured it out. N not mine to do, mine to be an instrument to be blown through so that I'm able to deliver a message. It's not mine to figure out. Well, I'm guessing having AJ as your partner then um, allowed you to sort of go down that path with a little bit more ease. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got someone there that uh, was doing the work already and that you respected and loved as well. So that must have made a difference to allow that to come through. Um, and if you want to comment on that, you can. And then AJ, if you want to take from there, you know, how did you get started as well? Sure. Well, you know, it really was a letting go for me. You know, uh, like many of your viewers, I've always been a seeker and I've always been asking questions ever since I was a kid. And I never really tackled it from an academic point of view. I just tackled it from an intuitive point of view. And what's interesting is the more I asked, and I don't really know who I was asking. I don't know if I was asking my higher self. I don't know if I was asking my guides. I don't know if I was asking source consciousness and the divine itself. But the more I asked, the more I got question, uh, answers back and the more that uh, spurred further and deeper insight. And so uh, it was just a natural progression for me in terms of channeling. Uh, I was always uh, in highly intuitive, um, very open uh, to read energies and, and read the vibes of other people. And, and then, you know, as I went further into the, the psychic uh, realms, I found that... Uh, you know, the more I was asking questions, the more I was getting these answers back. And it wasn't until I met Tom that he said, you know, you're actually channeling. And I realized myself that these, these answers that were coming back, and I would say them out loud, weren't anything that, that of my own regular voice or, or intellect. These are something, these were genuine answers that helped advance my life and gave me further insight. And that's when we said, 
let's test this out on each other and uh, you know incorporate this into our into our own lives and into our own uh, spiritual practices. And then it was that the gates were open. It was it was it was really quite remarkable what happened next. But I do think asking is critical. Mm-hmm. I think for both of us, there was a real yearning, a real asking for. And our own interaction with the spiritual and celestial realms, and um, and more importantly, a desire for purpose that we had an opportunity to be used. I didn't know that either one of us thought this was the way that was going to happen, but, <laughs> but I do know that both of us were asking, and I, I do really believe when you ask, you're you're provided. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I know a number of the the guides around us in our channelings have also said, you know, we we need you to ask. We're not just going to tell you because this is part of your own uh, development, your own spiritual journey. And so when we have our online or group channeling sessions or, or personal sessions, we always prepare people and say, please come with your questions. Please come prepared to ask uh, so that they can fulfill that requirement in you uh, without sort of um, controlling or interfering in any way. It's really a personal journey that they're interested in. You were channeling one thing, both of you were at one time, but I believe you're both channeling the same energy now. So what was you channeling and what are you bringing through now? For uh, quite some time, I channeled primarily a group I call the grandfathers. They appeared to me, they felt to me like they were native elders. Uh, There was a circle of them. They were a collective themselves. I could feel them around the fire. I could hear the drums. Uh, At times it was a little exhausting because I channeled per beat. (laughs) And, uh, And the grandfathers were just this wonderful, delightful entity that um, that spoke most often. Yes. And for myself, you know, uh, I had an interest in in all things extraterrestrial. I always believed in interplanetary life. And it's interesting, you know, the guides um, have have told me that uh, your spiritual development really goes where your interest is. So, you know, if if you uh, have uh, a high connection to the ascended masters, mm-hmm. then an ascended master will come and work through you. And for me, it was the extraterrestrials. And they had a very, each of these realms have a very distinct vibration. And each of them, both with uh, Thomas, the native ancestors, and myself, the extraterrestrials, they came and they spoke as a collective. And then what was really interesting one day as we held space for each other, uh, one day I channeled the native elders and Thomas channeled the extraterrestrials. And it was quite a surprise for us to physically feel the change in vibration and to have that manifest through us. And we said, hey, you know, what is going on here? And uh, it was the, the the native elders, actually, that were speaking at the time. And they said, well, you know, uh, there's there's no separation in the divine. You know, there's separation in your 3D world. But, you know, in the in the divine, there is no separation. And we're able to to meet on all of those resonant realms of vibration where there's affinity and assimilation. And, you know, they said with a wink and a nod, you know, how do you think we learned? We learned from our ancestors, which were the extraterrestrials. Right. Okay. And when you're talking about extraterrestrials, are you talking about, uh, you know, another reality? It's not in this shared reality as we would understand it. It's, It's of some other type of time and space. It is a shared reality, actually. You know, um, I think when you go on a spiritual journey, uh, you often look at things as external to you. But what the guides have presented to us is we're kind of in a fishbowl. We're all in this together. And it really is like when you turn on an old school radio system or when you type in an address in the internet, it's all out there. It's just where you hone your vibration, where you um, align your intention. And then once you make that connection, it opens up and it's very clear. And so that's how these different realms can come through with us. And, you know, it's important to remember that, um, you know, there are so many different uh, extraterrestrial races and realms uh, and beings out there, some that have physical bodies, some that are purely light bodies, 
and some that are a mixture in between. Just as there's this a massive diversity on Earth, there's also a massive diversity in the larger universe as well. So it really is what you focus on and what you tune into. But it's kind of nice that we have us as our own antennas, so to speak, so that we can dial into that frequency. Otherwise, I think we just short circuit. Right, right. And what are you channeling now, both of you? Is there a, something in common? We call them the guides. And, um, you know, what's really interesting, what we're talking about here is something called, we call universal mind. And, and the grandfathers, the other guides have all said to us, we all share one mind. And they've even given us this image of this uh, ball that has different faces pushing through, saying we each have an identity, we each have a perspective, and yet we all share one mind. So we share intention, we share understanding, we share this commonality that, that transcends space and time, quite honestly, it works a bit beyond. So it's interesting that when we channel, we call upon these energies that are closest to the light, that are of highest vibration, and we at times get angels, we at times get ascended masters, I think we get them a lot, the grandfathers come back, the extraterrestrials come back, we've had uh, nature spirits come in, we've had animal spirits come in. What, what I think is important here, and what they've taught us is that we will be whatever you need. So who will speak in that big ball, that big collective, is who needs to speak for you. In fact, there are times when they have said, if you have a, a religious background, then we'll appear as a saint for you, if that's easier for you, or as an angel, if you have a, a Middle Eastern background or an Indian background, we'll appear as Shiva or as uh, and, and the other uh, deities, that there, there is this flexibility within these realms, within this universal mind that says, our goal is to speak as you will hear us. And so there, there's not the same hold on identity that you and I have, right? There's not a need for this identification in the same way. There's much more of a, we'll answer that, but let's let this voice speak because this voice will be heard better than that voice. Okay, so all under the universal mind umbrella in a sense, yeah. So yes, yeah. Uh, when a client comes to see you, what type of clients are you getting and what are they what are they getting from a session? If and and you know what do they what do they come there for in a sense and what do they leave there with? It, it varies quite a bit. I'll tell you when we first started, most of who we were seeing were other practitioners. Yeah. And we thought that was quite interesting. And so we asked the guides about that. Why, why are we seeing people with gifts? And they make a point about this often, about the sentinels, about the waves of conscious evolution. And that there are obviously those who have not raised any consciousness around any of these things there and which is i think still the majority of population but then there are segments of population who have reached different levels who have moved closer and closer right we know we have individuals now in 5d and and we know that we have individuals who have reached certain levels spiritually and that seemed to be who we were uh seeing quite often who was attending our groups and who was coming to us as private clients and I believe it's because this is sometimes the least tended group, that this is the group that really needed to hear more direct uh, communication and had plenty still to work through. So what's interesting is those clients came to us like everyone else does. I'm, I'm thinking about my love life. I'm thinking about my finances. I'm thinking about my... Uh, you know, my future, I'm thinking about what I should be focused on, I'm still trying to overcome some guilt or some shame, I, all those things that we humans are always saddled with, no different in, in those clients than in other clients. I think what's interesting, though, is that um, the guides present uh, a unified message. They have a series of, of principles that they want to impart and really give us a deep dive in, in understanding our role in the larger universe about uh, why we decided to incarnate, the purpose of our incarnation, the purpose of our existence, and really give us a deep dive in understanding our circumstances. Because 
let's face it, so much of our environment and our circumstances right now seem beyond our control or seem beyond um, that of, of, of joy or, or uh, you know, something that we're, you know, uh, participating in that we want to attract for us. It's anything but, right? And so the guides uh, really offer some deep insight into how our circumstances serve us and what we can do about it. And the, one of the things that I love about the guides is that they're really practical. They're here with practical answers right now to help you be the best version of yourself that you can be. Now, our favorite clients are clients who are open, mm -hmm. who are willing simply to say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. And so I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to try and to expose some of those uh, vulnerabilities um, are always our favorite, whether they come from this experience or not, whether they have some background or not. Um, that That's always been our favorite and the ones that we've seen the greatest progress towards. Our favorite interaction with a client is when they come in beat up like we all are from life and they leave beaming. In fact, the guide's entire focus is on the experience of joy, the state of being of joy. And what they really are after is that when you've reached this highest level of vibration, you, you are in the state of joy. You can't help it. That's the product of that vibration. And so much more uh, of getting yourself there, uh, the better, right? Because there are newer energies coming into the planet. You know, we think this is the pinnacle, but the pinnacle is much higher. We just haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, no matter what the circumstances are that, that seem to be going on around you in your individual life, not just on the bigger um, you know, yeah. scale of things. So your website is? Speakingfromsource.com. And that's where we have um, all of the information for our services and our events and a whole lot of other information about the guides as well. So, you know, we really use speakingfromsource.com as the primary initiative to get the message out for the guides. And then we have our social media presence as well on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube simply at Speaking From Source. And any updates that you're up to will be there because I remember you mentioning to me in our communications, you've got a TV show that's coming out soon, a new TV show on the yes. network. You'll have to tell us the audience, the network again, where people can find yes. you. Yes, um, it's actually called Soul Search TV, and it will be launching 12-12 of this year. And we have a 12-episode series where we're featuring uh, messages from the guides and discussions about what they have to say called The Infinite Pathway Journey to Self-Realization. So this has been um, a pretty quick path for you, really, in the sense of like, you know, you started the work. Uh, when did you start this work together? What year was that? Um, 2018, I think we actually in earnest started channeling. I think we decided to go public in 2019. Yeah. But what's interesting is that, you know, when you look at channeling, it is this free flow of information that comes through you, much like a download. And, you know, if, if anyone's familiar with a download of inspiration that they might get about an idea or a concept, it's sort of everything all at once. And it's interesting because when we channel, we make sure that we, um, you know, have the audio on so we can record it and that we can get transcripts because the information that is channeled through is, is quite, quite voluminous. And so um, even though it might seem like we've been channeling, uh, you know, relatively recently, the messages are for now and there are plenty of them. So our task right now is to, is to get those messages out and share them with the world. And what's been interesting, we channel just for ourselves uh, every week as well. We just spend time with the guides. They call it communion. And we just spend that time with the guides ourselves. And they have been our teachers. They have really helped us through understanding our own doubts, our own fears, because you can't not, uh, may, maybe we are different, but <laughs> I can just tell you that there were many times when I was like, am I making this up? Uh, am I just, just fantasizing this? You know, yeah. maybe I am just a, a, a playwright. And, uh, and then there's this fear, you know, we really did go through with the guy. It's like, do you need us? You've got some wonderful channels out there. What do you need us for? And their answer to that was, 
we need everyone and we are building voices from everyone because some will hear from one and not another. And some will hear and take in a message from someone else versus you. And so we need as many voices with as many perspectives. And it's interesting that the messages are so similar, even though our styles are quite different. Mm, and it's interesting too, you know, when you look back at our audio recordings and, and our transcriptions, it, it's clearly something that's removed from us. It's not something that, you know, Tom or, or myself would have thought to have put forward. It genuinely is a, a channeling of new thought, new ideas, and insights that are personal and particular to the group that we're facing or the individual that's before us. So it, it really is quite a remarkable experience. And it's something that you can feel as well. You know, um, at the end of a channeling session, the guides love to, to say, stick around for a minute or so because we want to share our energy. We want to share our energy in something they call the hug. And uh, it's amazing. You know, when Tom and I see the group online, they're clearly moved by this uh, at, the, at the end. They can clearly feel that energy uh, that the guides share even through the internet. Absolutely. And I've seen the hug, I think. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, so the guides or this collective or the you know universal mind, it's obviously benefiting from what you're doing as well, which a lot of people would think, well, how the hell can all that is benefit from this experience? But I guess it's another experience, isn't it, to have this connection? Uh, and also, are you uh, living the teachings of what you're bringing through as well? Because I'm sure that you have a normal life and things still, you know, upset you that's or... such a great question kevin i'm so glad you asked it because every so often you know i have to hit myself on the head and say you know the guides just talked about that last week and it's interesting because as they were preparing us for this uh this public role uh as we channeled every week uh they would really show us in our in our personal lives and get us to experience in a sort of microburst if you will uh certain experiences that led us to different understandings. And it was, it was, it's it's not always easy, I will tell you that much, but it certainly leads to phenomenal insight. And I can speak for myself, and I think I can speak for Tom too. It has changed us. It is it has improved us and expanded us in in ways that have um been tr truly quite remarkable. I think one of the most significant is just um understanding this concept of um wholeness and compassion and that we are actually cause over our circumstances. There is, There are things you can do that you can improve your life and improve the life of others and advance the consciousness of, of the planet. You don't have to live in, in sorrow or victimhood or, or um, lack. Uh, it's an abundant universe. And, and, and when you come into that understanding, it, it really is a like, oh my goodness. Yeah, but you know, it's also about timing as well. I've just got to say that. So, uh, don't forget what you're going to say. It's also about, you know, had you tried to do this before, I, maybe it just wouldn't have been as aligned as it is right now. There's something in the timing. You're always ready when you're ready. Yeah, and I think a, a big part of that was my meeting Tom. You know, I had an interest in channeling, um, but I always initially wanted someone to anchor for me because I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to go into channeling and I'm going to go into a trance and what if I don't come out of the trance or what if I don't remember what was said? And so it's great to have someone that can hold space for you as we did for each other in those early days uh, to help us, uh, you know, through that process. Absolutely. And Tom, I'm sorry to, yeah, I, I, I know you was going to say something there. Sorry about that. If you just want to remember what you was just going to say. No worries at all. I was going to say we put out a Wisdom Wednesday, an email that has a single quote with some discussion from the guides every week. And honestly, we sit with the guides and, and help them choose that. And uh, I, I always laugh because I'm kind of like, all right, it's going to be about this. Guess what I'm going to be working on this week? Yeah. <laughs> Guess what I'm going to be dealing with this week? Yeah, and absolutely. But not everyone's doing this work. And, um, you know, uh, some people with the work they're doing, they may not feel that they, you know, well, it's my service to help others, but they're doing what they enjoy to do but they wouldn't see it from that perspective like you might may see it from uh, well you know this is to help others as much as anything else so there's so many different perspectives of what we're here to doing you know your alignment is not someone else's alignment yet what they're doing is you know so far removed from this type of work yet it's still a product of 
joy for them, which hopefully, you know, is a help to others, but it may not look like it on a piece of paper. Do you know what I mean? If you were to sketch yeah. out what the, what, what, what the, what that's, they're doing. That's very true. You know, I'll, 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 there's always that desire, I think, in each and every one of us to be of service or to help someone else at one point or another. And the guides say, yes, that is commendable. But really what they're about is um, enabling you to see and develop and shine your own light. Um, you know, the, 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 the happier you are in your work or in your being uh, uh, and your understanding of yourself, uh, the more your light will grow and expand. And the more your, your light grows and expands in that high vibration, the more similar vibrations you will attract to yourself. So you're raising your vibration, if you will, higher and higher and higher. It's not necessarily in the good deed or the doing of service for someone else either. So it's quite an interesting perspective that they give us there. In fact, there's a trap there, quite honestly. It's quite easy to get lost sort of in this, I'm your savior. And the guides say often to groups and to clients, we're not here to fix you because you don't need to be fixed. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. And, uh, and it's so it's important for us to have that exact same attitude. I can't walk, have a client walk in and I think, oh, your life's probably a mess. Thank goodness you've gotten to us. I have no idea. I just know that source adores them. That's all I know. And that's all I need to know because they'll take care of the rest. Because it's, it's really, as you've probably heard other people say to you, it's about remembering. You know, we come in with all of this soul's knowledge, all of our higher self and all of this knowledge, I truly believe. And then it's a matter of remembering. And the word that the guides love to use is realizing. So I can live my whole life and never realize that I'm adored. And therefore, every pattern that I have in my life is about lack. It's about shame. It's about guilt. It's about identifying the negative. It's about realize, thinking joy is just this special occasion. Um, and, and, and as we, as we realize, uh, the truth, I guess, then uh, our lives naturally change. They can't not, it's impossible to unrealize something. But some lifetimes, some people's experience on this planet may never get to experience that. Correct. I think but that's so, why they get another chance. And I think that's <laughs> too why the guides are here right now, because they're saying you can, yes. you can experience that, you know, you're not subject to your karma, you're not subject to your circumstances. If you intend and you connect, then you can lead and experience the highest of high, the joyest of joy, the most synchronistic life you could imagine. But for some, it's just too big of a reach for us to even think about that yet. Uh, you know, consider that we, we live in uh, an economic realm right now, which is based on scarcity. And so everything around us is sort of based on scarcity, whereas the divine realm is completely opposite. It's based on abundance. And so that's the big shift for us. And that's what they want us, uh, everyone, each and every one of you, uh, regardless of your level of development, to really appreciate and understand right now. And yet they just said last weekend um, that uh, this is not about happy endings. This is not about getting everything you want. Because your soul, the important part of you, is on an eternal trajectory and is perfectly planned so that one lifetime may be um, disappointment. One lifetime may be, uh, a, and so what they say is that every ending is perfect, not every ending is happy. And, and it's because that's what your soul asked for and desired for this lifetime. So as much as you want to fight that and, you know, try to change that, what you're saying is um, we've not had a conversation with our soul. Maybe that, that's got a different uh, direction for us and we're fighting what our soul knows best sometimes. But then again, if that is the case, you know, there's a lot of talk out there about, you know, obviously, you know, law of attraction, you know, li living your best yes. life, getting whatever you want. It kind of takes that out the window, what you're saying there. Yes and no, because contrast will always exist. Uh, contrast enables you to grow and expand and to decide what you don't want and to cast that aside and to move toward what you do want and attract that toward you. And what the guides say very clearly is that there's opportunity in each and every one of your circumstances, even the ones that may not have a happy ending, like the loss of a job or the breakup of a relationship, 
to grow and expand into and to create something new. And we're constantly going through that evolution. And sometimes we call it hindsight, where we look back and we say, you know, thank goodness I, I, I ended up, you know, uh, that company ended up going bankrupt because it enabled this other opportunity to for me to find what I truly love to do and the environment that I truly love to be in. And even if that happy ending doesn't come true, it was still designed towards your perfection. In other words, it was something you agreed upon earlier that would enable your soul to discover itself. So if we ask, what's the purpose of our soul's creation? Uh, what's the purpose of each of these incarnations? The guides have said to us, it's self-realization, thus the name of our TV series. It's self-realization, it's understanding all that exists in your soul. But you know, as AJ just said, that happens through contrast. It doesn't happen through good times always. It happens at times when I want to know what is my soul able to do or what will my soul discover about itself through a terminal illness at 12 or through a lifetime of misery and poverty or slavery or any number of things. Now, what's important to remember is that's always part of a choice that's never thrust upon any soul, that's always given an opportunity. And then the other good news to remember is we have an endless loop of possibilities. This is the beauty of eternity. And so if I don't get it in a lifetime, I'll have another chance. It'll happen again, and I'll be able to try again. Do you think that type of thinking, though, puts people off from living what could be their best life right now so just just say that this is it right that there is nothing beyond the beyond what we're bringing through is not what we think it is it's beautiful teachings that i th i still think has a a value definitely what you what we you know people like yourselves do right because it is the best uh, or closest thing to any religion that i would like to follow and i know it's not a religion but just you know it's all about love it's all about the the best that you can be so say that uh, this is the only lifetime that what awaits us beyond is yeah. just nothing and that's okay we wouldn't know the difference right uh, are we putting ourselves off from you know getting to that pinnacle point in our life that for some people that may say well i can't do it right now i'll do it in the next life it's fine <laughs> but what is that pinnacle point? I think I think what's important to recognize. Well, whatever is it that, is that you may 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 really want to do that you've just not achieved yet. You just don't give up just yet. Yeah, but you get somewhere. You know, just because again, we kind of think we humans think in terms of this kind of do it or don't, right? It's it's either all or nothing. And I I think the universe thinks about this very differently. It thinks about, it thinks like evolution thinks. It thinks in a spiral. It thinks in terms of slow and steady progress and growth. And I think within that, there are wonderful opportunities for your best life every life. You know, again, we want to make the assumption that an unhappy ending is an unsatisfying ending or an unhappy or is completely without, you know, our, our best life. Sometimes it, it can be. And we've all heard stories about humans in incredible conditions who shone, who really just came out and became magnificent. I think what's interesting, though, and, and what the guides are talking about is that there's a very real opportunity for us right now to find that happiness. Mm -hmm. um, the guides have often said that, you know, why do you think we placed you on Earth? Why do you think we placed you on a land where there's so much diversity, where there's so much for you to focus on? Uh, to pivot away from your circumstance or to expand into new realms or where you constantly have the ability to make new choices in any moment of time. And so, you know, your life really is there for you to create. Your happiness or whatever is, is there for you to create, whether you are ill at a particular moment or whether you did lose your job. You know, these are situations where you can always uh, pivot and find new things to focus on, new avenues to expand into. And it's really the journey. All of these experiences are part of your eternal journey, your eternal trajectory. Nothing's ever wasted or for not. Uh, this is what we call sometimes building character. Um, the guides also say, too, that, you know, um, you can grow and expand through uh, the experiences you have in joy as well. It's not just through the hard times or the rough times. You can find tremendous spiritual advancement in happiness and joy in sharing with others. 
uh, as well. And so I think what the guides are really talking about here is, um, you know, you, you do experience contrast, but it doesn't have to be so extreme. We don't have to have wars and suffering on the planet, uh, you know, to, to, to grow in our evolution. Yes, um, but obviously, you know that, that that's right. Um, but we're not um, all going down that path, are we? I mean, with the conflicts no. in the Ukraine, uh, now the conflicts in in Israel and the uh, atrocities that are, are performed by both parties as well, and the the absolute suffering uh, that that that's taking place, even as we speak right now, um, yeah. it's very difficult to see it from that perspective. I, I you know, and. Um, I guess souls from those regions may uh, that they they would um, not resonate with what's being said here because they're suffering mm. and there's no way out of that suffering. Um, yeah, our hearts definitely go out to all of those that that you know are in situations of conflict, whether it be personal or political or you know a larger scale like that for sure. Um, you know, but there are larger lessons here. I think for the rest of humanity as we grow in our empathy, as we grow in our compassion, as we grow in our understanding of, about what all of these things mean. So there's growth everywhere. There's also, um, I think what's fascinating is that we're constantly given small pieces of joy. I remember uh, having someone very close to me in my life who had a terrible medical condition and I was driving to the hospital to what could have been the end for that individual and just feeling all the pressure of that. And in the middle of it, there was this beautiful tree. And I know that sounds so silly, but the truth of the matter was for that moment, there was a breath of fresh air. I believe there's always a moment of fresh air that source provides for us. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting too, because the guides really do give us a perspective outside of ourselves. And both Tom and I in our private channeling sessions have said, you know, what is going on in the world? It seems the exact opposite of what we're desiring with all of these conflicts and, you know, um, economic uh, situations that are happening around the world. And the guide said that's really interesting. But, you know, when we look at the human race and we when we look at Mother Earth, that's not what we see. What we see is your light. What we see is all of the celebrations that are happening around the world, all of the marriages and the births and the coming together. You know, consider that a lot of what we watch on the news and for entertainment is what we call drama, okay? And it's very easy to see that all is happening in the world is just conflict and drama because that's what's out there for us to see. But, you know, in the everyday interactions, in the, in the smile at the supermarket, you know, in the allowing of the car to go before you ahead of traffic, in all of those instances, your light shines, that connection is made, their light shines, and you just grow that little bit more. And they said, that's what we see and that's what we're focusing on. And that's why we're coming forward in so many ways right now to remind you of this connection, of this opportunity, of, of the potential of what's there for you in these small ways. For us individually, yes, but there is suffering that takes place on the, we, we can't ignore that. Well, we can, but yeah. I, what's the point? No. I mean, it's, it wouldn't be very uh, kind, would it, to to ignore it i mean there's not much we can do about it but i suppose what the guys would say or what 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 is what can be done about it is for at least us to you know to live in joy to live in purpose is is a is a something that seems to have a ripple effect to so many people that um uh, keeps you in present moment to so, to so much good good for you but you know it's difficult you know we, when doing that sometimes just to, to think about you know what people have have to go through um and how that can even where is the where is the help for them but maybe as a soul they've chosen to to be a representative of of um a contrast in a sense do you know what i mean to others but um it, it's a direct sort of um uh, you know, contrasted to, to the work that the guys want to bring through. I mean, what is the solution? Be because if we, you know, uh, when you see the, the the imbalance of the world, we're only heading to one place again, a world war. Now that will affect us all, right? Yet we can still come from that space of what you're talking about in, in the essence of a world war, but it, you know, it, it could change the planet as we know it. And, uh, you know, 
I, I guess in World War Two there was a, 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 a the build up of the spiritual movement was even bigger at that time. It was needed at that time, right? Because so many people were dying and people wanted comfort in ways. And this that was one way. There was a sort of pinnacle in the you know in, in the spiritual movement. But we seem to be heading towards that again. You know, most shows don't want to talk about this. They don't, and I, I, that's a shame. Um, but we are, and we're going to. Yeah, I agree. I really appreciate that we are because um, two things that are important to that we've learned from guides. And the first is that this is all about choice, that we all have free will. We all have free choice. We don't always use that well, and we don't always do that towards the greater good. But we also have this concept of evolution. We have this movement of the spiral. I think it's a very interesting time because you may have noticed how much is being exposed, how many times the public is starting to say, I don't want that anymore. I don't want to live in that world. I'm done living in that world. That world is not satisfying to me. And so we have, but those choices, you can talk about a war all day, but you still cut someone off in traffic. You're in the exact same boat. You're sitting in the same place. So the guides are interested in your choice. They're interested in your light as much as they're interested in everyone else's, right? Um, and so we all have these opportunities to move forward and to grow. Some of us will get it now. Some of us won't. And, uh, and I think that is the reality about the way in which evolution works. I think we have, like everything else, we have early adopters and we have laggards. <laughs> It's I mentioned World War Three. There, I'm not so, sorry to cut you off. There, I, I, I will let you go back to what you're saying. I'm not saying that's a definite that's going to happen. I, I don't want it neither, and I don't think it would yeah. be the the end of of what we've got. But it would change things, right? Um, I'm just, yeah. you know, you know, we don't have to go down that road. And um, but mm -hmm. I, I, I guess you know, it's all part of the birthing pains of a consciousness. You know, we we think this ride's going to be, you know, when we talk about the, you know, the, the evolution of consciousness on this planet. Uh, yeah, great, but I don't think it's as smooth as um, we're being told. Oh no, for some, you know, so it really, it really is very much relative. You know, uh, it reminds me of a, a channeling that we did for ourselves uh, a few weeks ago. And they said that the, the dark clouds are burning up. They're there and they're present. It's going to be a bumpy road for some, you know. Um, but beyond the dark clouds, there, there's always the sun. There's always something new that grows up to take its place. And if you consider the idea, you know, um, when you when you when you outgrow your clothes, or when your clothes get worn out, or or when they're simply out of date, you'll discard the old and you'll put on something new. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now in larger and smaller ways. And there's, there's actually phenomenal light on the planet right now as people are making new choices in their careers, new choices in their relationships, new choices in their connection and understanding of the environment. This actually is a really dynamic and vibrant time on earth right now. But you won't hear about it because it isn't good TV. <laughs> it's exactly right. It's exactly right. So, you know, that's why we have so many emerging channels coming forward to say, look, there's, there's phenomenal stuff for you to look at and to focus on and to make choices toward that will enable your light to shine and the light of others to shine together with you. You know, I, I will tell you that we spend probably in in channel, the guides spend probably as much time preparing people for these bumps. And they say joy is the antidote. And it took us a while to figure out what they really meant by that. And they really meant you've got to go back and stop thinking about joy circumstantially. Joy is when good things happen. No, no, no. Joy has nothing to do with circumstance. It has to do with the vibrational stance. And so how do you reach a higher vibration? You live in appreciation. You, you live in a, in a place where you in your own mind create uh, the kind of world that you want to live in. You face the light. And, uh, and in that way, they really teach people 
live in joy, and then you'll get through any circumstance. Absolutely. And I think that's part of the solution to some of the things I was touching upon there is, is to go into that, uh, that purpose, that joy, whatever it is, right? And if it's not what, it's, what it turned out to be, I'm sure that, you know, then there's the other part of your journey that's about to start as well, right? Ab- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I know we're going to do a little bit of challenge in a moment um, with discernment then. I believe that there's a particular clothing that you wear, a, a, sh- a, sh- a shawl. Shawl. Yeah, we've got them here, actually. Um, and it's an interesting story behind that. It, it's interesting that you bring that up because uh, we wear a shawl. Uh, the guides instructed us actually to wear uh, a shawl uh, when we channel. And there were a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one was that when we wear a shawl, it's our indication to ourselves and to everybody else that we're stepping into channeling mode, um, that we're ready to to channel and bring in the energy of the guides. It's also um, a, a layer that we put on ourselves, kind of like a, 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 a an armor of light, so to speak, that keeps us focused um, of high energy uh, into the divine. And you can see here that with our shawls that we place on each other, there's some geometric designs uh, and the like. So uh, it's it's a real high vibe type of um, of shawl that we use, and it really just enables us to have terrific focus when we bring in the guides for channeling. I think it's not unlike the prayer shawls that are worn by Israelites. When, um, and so when they first told us that, we didn't quite know where to go. I didn't know if we had to go to a place and get prayer shawl. And so we started looking on Google, and of course, the guides who are so wonderful took us right to this beautiful website <laughs> where these really modern, wonderful shawls exist, and yeah. we, uh, we kind of fell in love with them from there. But that does help you with discernment as well, in a sense, um, and, yes. and what's what's allowed to come through and what's not allowed to come through, in a sense? Yeah, you know, we, we do spend a lot of time in intention and preparation in um, anchoring our chakras and bringing in, you know, the, the highest and the truest and the best so to speak. And because we have a regular spiritual practice, you know, the guides are familiar with this idea of, you know, our our shawls and the the procedures that we do to connect specifically with them. So um, there's nothing too random about it. It is very intentional. Interestingly enough, and you'll hear it when we get started, because we'll do a bit of this invocation, we can't not. Um, You've really taught us an awful lot about the chakras. And they utilize the chakras as a pathway toward uh, that realm. And um, and that's been fascinating to learn. We have an awful lot that we're still learning from them about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you for doing this. I appreciate you know, everything you've said so far. It's, uh, yeah, definitely needed. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So shall we bring in the guides? Okay, right, we'll take a few good. minutes here. I'm going to uh, do this out loud because I always encourage an audience to join us in this part. You know, we're all in the process of focus. We're all moving our sight, if you will, our, our second sight towards this direction. So we're going to begin with three deep breaths in and out, in and out, in and out. As we feel that breath in, we feel the gift of life that is ours constantly, always feeding every cell of our bodies, maintaining our life, simply available to us through a breath in, a breath that also serves as a pause, a way of separating ourselves from the moment when it is necessary for us to do so, an exhalation that allows us to simply release and let go, to place back out into the atmosphere that which no longer serves us, this free gift of choice given to us each and every moment. And so we feel each of the chakras begin to open for us. We feel our root chakra setting for us our security, anchoring us into Mother Earth, who holds us steady and raises up her energy toward us, met by the divine energy from our crown now open, joining us in the heart 
and spreading throughout our entire chakra system. We feel the creative energy of our sacral chakra. We feel our own individual unique soul's identity in our solar plexus. And we feel these lights begin to shine and feeling with our breath the energy of our heart chakra, our inborn compassion, a part of our human design, as is our identity, as is our creativity, as is our security. And we move up to our throat chakra and feel the light blue light that shines out, enabling us to express all of these gifts that exist for us within our energetic systems. Now to our third eye, which opens a beautiful window beyond this dimension, beyond this time and space, out into the astral realm where we call out upon our guides, asking them to join us now and to speak. And through us, we ask that we are able to communicate their downloads accurately and clearly for all those who are listening. And we ask that only those energies that are closest to the light, that are of the highest and purest vibration, are joining us now and speak on behalf of those who are listening. We are grateful and we thank you. <laughs> we are grateful for the opportunity to commune with you today, dear ones. And we are present to remind you of the incredible being that you are in all of your systems with all of your perceptions and senses at this critical time of your evolution and indeed your personal understanding of who you are as an aspect of the divine realm. We remind you at this time of your critical ability to discern, to choose for yourself how you will view your circumstances, how you will view others, for in this discernment is your moving toward your own light and the light of others. And as you do so, you expand your light, you expand your consciousness into understanding and compassion and uh, awareness of all that is and all that is possible for you. Mm -hmm. We are grateful for this conversation and we consider this always conversation with you. Mm -hmm. We wish you to join with us in conversation far more often often why we have surrounded you with many guides, none of which you can see, none of which you can hear, none of which write a note to you, but that are speaking to you regularly. And if you listen, if you enable yourself to listen carefully, you shall hear them. You shall hear them cheer you on. They are not guiding you. They are not directing you. They shall not tell you what to do, for they need not. And they know that you are a creature of choice and that your soul is unique, that your soul was created to complete the universe. Yes. And therefore, you do not need them to do anything but to cheer you on, to guide you along, to remind you of how much you are adored by source. And these gifts are available for you at all times, and so we encourage you to invite the divine into these important conversations about life and about death, about difficulty and about ease, about flow and and about the bumps that occur for each of you, for in that is the growth of your consciousness, in that is the growth of your soul, remembering that it has lifetime upon lifetime upon lifetime to get it improved, yet never complete, never fully done, for there's always more to discover, always more to grow. We are anxious to have you join in this conversation mm -hmm. with us now. 
Okay, well, thank you for uh, this opportunity as well. Um, yeah, I just, you know, want to ask some um, questions in regards to, you know, where we are as a, as a you know, in, in our timeline right now, in a sense. And when it comes to the West Bank and Gaza and the current conflict that's going on right now in this time, what is the spiritual solution to the West Bank and Gaza when it comes to Israel? It is no different than the spiritual solution for all violence, for all separation. And for we remind you, you are moving towards oneness where there is no determination of what is mine and what is yours, where there is only ours, where we are able to feel one another's presence and one another's beauty and one another's value in ways that humans are not feeling it yet. We remind you that it is this conflict that is ages, ages old and is therefore representative of so very much of the human condition. You who are far apart from this conflict are uh, not far apart at all for it is there for you to evolve from. It is there for you to recognize. It is in each of your recognition of what is missing and what does not yet exist in the oneness of the planet that it will enable growth for you, but also for the planet. Understand in the nature of your question, therein is separation, how there is a propensity for you on your planet to only see the differences, to see the separateness, whereas we, when we look upon you, we see the oneness, we see the light in each and every one of you as representatives of the human race and therein is your solution as you come to a greater self-realization uh, yes a greater self-realization of who it is and what it is that you are you shall find it impossible to mm, separate yourselves from one another you shall find it uh, increasingly more and more difficult to mm, look upon others and not see their suffering and not see mm, the harm that is done as you reach further to your connection, your wholeness, your inclusiveness into the reality of oneness that is waiting there for you. We would encourage all of you mm, to find the parallel that exists in this conflict with your own. What is it that you are protecting? What is it that you are claiming as yours and yours alone? Where are the threats for you in what you are and who you are caused by another being? And we would say to you, there lies the solution as these work themselves out for you, as you release what it is that you must release as you make new choices about your compassion and your understanding. No other being can remove from me what I am or who I am. We must both come to an understanding of what we share and as you do so in the microcosm of your own lives, there you shall see a similar solution being found across humanity. Interesting. So, yeah, so that has a direct ripple effect. So when we live into a purpose and live into joy, no matter what that is, of course, as long as it's not hurting mm. yourself or someone else, that has a ripple effect to uh, other places of the world and as sort of, you know, to the what we're talking about now with, with the conflicts taking place. But does it take a more evolved or more um, uh, more open souls to sort of come into that part of the world for that conflict to sort of resolve in the end? I mean, it, it, there seems, I mean, okay, that's, yes, I understand what you're saying, but, but, there, but in what you're saying, there's no, is there anything that, that these people in the West Bank and Gaza are not able to apply that type of understanding, are they? At this time, many, many are not. 
yet ready to take on this consciousness, yet we remind you that all are able, all have the ability across all humanity to do so. It is choice and that you are seeing more than anything else. It is not even exposure. It is a choice for light shines and always shines over darkness. It has always been, it shall always be. And so it is important that each of you make a decision about your consciousness for mm, it adds only to the light. Mm -hmm. It adds only to what is there. There are always others around you who shall not make this choice and shall live accordingly, shall suffer, unfortunately, and cause suffering of many others. And yet, and yet the possibility always exists. We encourage you to visualize this possibility. Do you know that you have the ability to create a reality? You have the ability to manifest what is around you. It is necessary for you sentinels who have begun to see the light, who have begun your conscious journey to now imagine others, to gift to others your own vision of what is possible for everyone. Each and every one of you, each and every one of you, as you are here now at this time of conscious evolution, at this critical point of your self-realization, are here now for this purpose, to have an understanding of what is within you and the potential within you for this self-realization. And as it manifests in others, it shall quickly manifest in the larger whole for once the dawn continues, once the dawn breaks, it continues its rise to illuminate everything and everyone under its gentle rays. Millions, legions before you, far advanced from you. Divine beings, celestial beings, intergalactic beings that have worked through many of these conflicts on their own are there before you, running alongside you, running in front of you. And you are not alone. You are never alone. It is easy for you to see, for you only listen to the worst of reports, that all is falling apart. And yet we encourage you to open your eyes and to see the legions that are in front of you, that are guiding the light towards all places where it is necessary. Are some souls that are so damaged in a sense, like if you took, um, you know, some of the Hamas um, individuals that you know, did some of the most atrocious stuff um, on the um, people of Israel just recently? I mean, really, you know, very dark stuff. Mm -hmm. um, are, are, are those souls allowed back with free will to reincarnate again? Or is there a period of, you know, rehabilitation in a, in a sense towards themselves by themselves when they've crossed over? There is no fixing. If this is what you are asking, there is no fixing. There is no need to fix for on the other realm. It is easy to recognize the choices that were made at the time and to account, not to be judged, but to account and to simply recognize what choices were made under what conditions and uh, to allow the opportunity uh, to improve, uh, to advance, um, to evolve, um, to change in, in the next opportunity, and um, to bring peace when you once brought war, um, to bring joy when you once brought uh, sorrow and pain. It is always the opportunity for you to come and do it differently. Mm -hmm. There is the always the opportunity for creation and expansion in everything and everyone in all of your endeavors. Mm -hmm. It is not a matter of judgment evaluation of what may be considered as right or wrong. 
for example, the child and what it knows as a seven-year-old is different from what the adult may know as a 70-year-old. Mm -hmm. Are they wrong? Are they right? They are simply expressions of evolved consciousness at their levels of understanding. A new teaching, this a new teaching that choice is without judgment. Choice, which often comes from the information, the belief system that we have at the moment. If I believe in a violent world, it is easier for me to make choices towards violence. Yes, it is important that there are other examples, that there are other choices available, that there are new beliefs that are brought forward, and yet the source never looks upon your choice as good or bad, as right or wrong. It simply recognizes with great compassion the conditions in which your choice was made and always offers you a loving hand to make a different choice, sometimes in the same lifetime, sometimes in the next. Right, right. And again, the same can be said for obviously the Ukraine conflict, which is ongoing as well right now, with the same kind of solutions that you've, you've, you've mentioned there as well. Um, but the same dilemma that you uh, understand, you also feel on a different level with your own possessions, with your own greed, if you will, with those things that you covet and that you wish you had, those things that you try to use to enact your power over another human being. And this is what we wish to share with you, that each of you make these choices and each of you have the same opportunity without judgment to make a different choice. Yeah, well, that's right. Yes, yeah. so even in our own realities we still make some of those choices sometimes which which on the macro could be seen on the, the larger scale as well most definitely most definitely um and i guess what you're explaining as well is there's no real good or bad it, it is a sole choice but this is part of the conscious shift as well isn't it and um this is going to be i i guess from what it feels like to me ongoing for some time uh the mm -hmm. contrast that the you know this 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 yeah this contrast in the consciousness shift is uh can seem pretty rough sometimes, can't it? And um, we, we've got a, a way to go yet, maybe. Yes, quite, quite, but never alone, N -n never without opportunities for joy. We remind you that you are not left as a child unable to answer a math question. You are instead guided at all times. Look around you for those answers are there for you. They exist for you on a regular basis and simply to be found. This searching, this is part of your evolution as well. This recognition that uh, when I am not judged, then I am free to make new choices. Mm, a critical understanding for you mm, at this time is to understand that you need not be stuck in your conflict. You need not be stuck in your sorrow. You need not be stuck in your lack. There are opportunities for you each and every one of you to ascend and to move towards mm, those things and yes to attract those things to um, bring them toward you in your everyday consciousness in both large and small the item that is on sale at the supermarket to uh, the dream job you have been coveting a lifetime. They are all there for you. They are not separate from you. And this is the critical understanding for those to appreciate at this time. Do you know that you are not all of the same age in your souls and that you are at different stages of your personal evolution, your personal development? And this is why it is so important to overcome the issue of judgment for without compassion, it is easy to see choices as ignorant and as foolish and as dangerous and as destructive. And yet, when we see a child engage in behavior that is untoward, that is unproductive, we are able to show compassion and say they are still young, they are still learning, they are still growing. 
This is how source sees you. This is how we see you. For we know you are all at individual stages of development, all headed in a similar opportunity, similar trajectory towards your growth and towards your maturity. That's an important part, absolutely, to see it from that perspective as well. And, you know, again, I, I, you know, I think you may agree, but, you know, separation holds us back sometimes when we see each other so separate, don't we? Um, and, and religion does a good thing of that. And that's very difficult for a very religious person to sometimes, you know, see that there is no separation. Difficult, yes. Not impossible difficult for we would encourage you to think of what has been the advantage that you have gained from your separation and it has been minimal and yet you are given and blessed as we said to you in the earlier meditation with a heart chakra built in your compassion, a part of your nervous system, inseparable from the rest of who you are. We would encourage you to spend more time with this energy center, for it is already there. It is already waiting for you. In compassion lives the antidote to separation. Right. And to also see that sometimes transition, as in spiritual transformation, it's not always a happy-go-lucky type of transformation as well. Sometimes it can be a violent transformation in, in you know, some respects, but um, it's still part of the transformation. Need not be yet. It is whatever is needed by, for you. And uh, so we would encourage you mm, to allow yourself to grow. For it is resistance, it is resistance that is keeping you from an easier path. And it is resistance that is creating for you the energy of a greater, more violent at times transformation. Yes, but is a young soul able to see it from that perspective? If, if as you've talked about old and you know, younger souls, is a soul that's less developed or has less experience able to see it from that perspective? Perhaps, perhaps not. They need teachers, yes. They need guidance from their fellow humans, yes. We remind you that you are social creatures by nature. Mm -hmm. Your interdependence upon each other is uh, critical at times for the growth and maturity and the spiritual evolution okay. of the whole. And so we remind you, dear ones, not to look externally for um, blame or judgment or assessment of others conditions, but simply to mm, look within, to grow your own happiness, your own circumstances, and to shine your own light. This is where the transformation upon the planet is to occur. And do not think that it is each of your individual journeys simply to evolve. No part of your evolution has to do with your connection to one another, for this is oneness as well. We say often it is important that you are able to visualize the other from the sight of source. Yet we would also suggest when the person in front of you is hungry to make a sandwich. <laughs> for all of these things are part of your humanity, are a part of your collective power are a part of why the human civilization is as attended to as it is. Oh, the potential that exists within you, it is all we can see. And you may be disappointed that we are unable to join you in many of the sad stories of your humanity, and yet you do not wish for us to do so, for we hold a light for you that maintains a level of vibration that is so desperately needed for you and that we wish for you to carry on to others. Always there, always there. Yes, and, and being true to yourself to find the joy within your journey as well. Mm -hmm. Always there, always there, even when small. Always something to appreciate, always something uh, to admire 
always some piece of beauty to take in. Mm -hmm. We remind you, dear one, that this is your natural state. This is the core of who you are. Joy is your natural vibration that is seen in your young ones as they express themselves. And so this is a returning to your natural state should you allow yourself to do so. We would say to you this, for we have talked about many lofty requirements and responsibilities, but we wish to tell you that the core of all of this is your acceptance of your own divinity. It is your understanding truly within your heart chakra of how deeply you are adored. And so we remind you often that you are precious that your soul answers a need that the universe had. Your soul completes the universe. This is how precious you are, how important you are. We suggest you begin there always, mm. not in a list of to-dos. And also present moment. I just want to add that before this is over. I think coming into present moment is such mm. a relief for many when we've been in pain. Yes, yes, for we project much that has not yet occurred or that has occurred and you can't change it you know you're not learning yes. from the lesson yeah yeah or not not learning but it's still you know it's there's still pain there but that present moment is the is the um place to to really come from yeah absolutely if there's any other final message i really appreciate what you've uh, both um or what this one message uh, this one source has come through to say it very appreciative um so i'll, I'll leave you with the last um message mm, dear one we shall leave you as we always leave others with an understanding for you to appreciate how vital you are in the grand scheme of things what an essential part your incarnation is at this time and to remind you of your light that is there mm, for you to discover for you to expand upon and for you to connect um, with all those that are waiting to experience you and to love you and to share with you for you are so deeply adored by consciousness you are so deeply mm, treasured for mm, the experiences that you are undertaking mm, in this incarnation right now and so we leave you with an energy of of this love mm, for you should you choose to take it for it is always your choice it is always your choice and yet we would suggest you not resist you allow for the feeling of divine love to wrap its arms around you and so we leave you with this energy and encourage you to hold it closely as we become complete Okay, AJ and Thomas, I'll just let you just come back in there. I thought that was very marvelous what was said there. And uh, oh, yeah, you, yeah, you. very appreciate what you both had to share there as well. Um, so just remind us one last time, your website is? Speakingfromsource.com. You'll find uh, information about the two of us there and about the channelings that we do. But specifically, we'd love you to go over to our YouTube channel and uh, hear from the guides themselves. That's where you'll find the channel videos, messages from the guides. So simply in your web browser, type the at symbol speaking from source and our website, our Instagram channel, our YouTube channel. They'll all pop up there for you to explore. And we'd love it if you could subscribe and be a part of our speaking from source community. Absolutely. And life is always conspiring for our greatest good as well yes it is so so true we think so and what a better way to spend the day thinking that than everything else right yeah 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 and you know i just want to share with you right now i don't know if you can perceive it but we're looking at you and i can, i see that you are lighter i, do I too. see that you are lighter it's just interesting i don't say that to uh, host <laughs> generally, but I can see it in your in your space. And I hope that you take the, the light and the love of the energy of your guides and the guides with you because I can see I can see the light has opened in you. Yeah, you're quite adored. Mm. Well that's um interesting. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Yeah, appreciate that. Um 
well, not easy subjects, but yeah, I, I so appreciate what you know you did just there as well. I know it's on a, the mind of a lot of people right now, so I'm just trying to represent that. Do you know what I mean as well? And these are not Absolutely. easy I think subjects. It's very important. You know, um, the guides, they don't, there's no wrong question. There's no politically correct question or anything like that. They are here of service. And, you know, this is a time of transparency. We're seeing things bubble to the surface right now. And so as channels, you know, our job is to, is to let them speak and to be as transparent as possible. It's not about, you know, what Tom or AJ, uh, you know, want us of us. It's really, you know, us stepping aside and letting the guides come through with with their um, perspective from source consciousness. Well, thank you. Thank you both very, very much for what you're doing as well. Much appreciated for coming on. We're, we're so grateful so for what you are doing too thank in this you. in this docu-series and everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you.